Thank you, guys. Is this on? OK, thank you, guys. Um, so I'm going to talk about two things today, uh, give you a brief background on what the growth team at Airbnb look like and what we do. And then I'm going to talk about the most recent uh, successful product that we launched, or, or growth, growth product, which was the referrals program. Um, we launched that in January, so we had like eight months, good eight months to actually see how it's performing. It's been, it's been an exciting story. So the, product, the growth team at Airbnb is a part of the product team. We're, we're mostly engineers. There's two product managers, uh, a couple of designers, a couple of data scientists, and I think 12 or 13 engineers. Um, in our Mad Men days, it looked like this. Um, and the way we think about kind of building growth at Airbnb is there's two really, really high level uh, kind of takeaways of, of things that makes it different for the company. And that's the growth rate of like our bookings and, and any other metrics that drive our bookings. And secondarily, it's like how big is the actual market? Those things really, really matter in like two or three years from now. So as a growth team, we try to focus on the first part, like really trying to understand what is the thing that drives the growth rate of our business. And, and that growth rate for many companies is, is kind of divided by uh, a number of different organic sources and some paid sources and some just direct traffic that you don't know too much about. And the more you understand about that growth rate, the better you can actually optimize uh, some of these things. So um, on the very, very top of the funnel, the thing that we do is try to accelerate awareness. So here in San Francisco or in the US, Airbnb is a fairly well, especially in, in the startup world, in this, these circles, Airbnb is a fairly known, known brand. But actually, if you go globally, if you go to uh, places far out, out of US, it's actually not a, a very well-known brand. So um, awareness is still something that we're, we're, we're working on, uh, we spend a lot of time on. Um, and that can be done in many different ways, but uh, through the growth team, like a bunch of our products are, are focused on that. Um, in terms of conversion, um, once you actually get someone to arrive on our site, then there's basically two paths you can take. You can kind of become a guest or a host. And for us, as a growth team, we want to understand uh, how the, that funnel looks like from the very, very top, from the moment someone arrives on our site or on our app, to the moment someone actually do a search or, or, or contact the host, or actually uh, go to the, the, the place where you list your space. So um, this conference is like, this should be given. But, but if you ask yourself, like, why is growth important? Like, wh why is it that there should be a team inside a product company that is focusing specifically about this? And there's many different ways you can look at this. But one way to look at it is like, you are building for users. Um, users, um, when you build products, users are the, the consumers of that product. Um, but for most companies that aren't Facebook, most of those users aren't actually yet on your product. So, if you think about the, the people that are going to end up becoming your users, spending a lot of time and thinking about how they, how they will discover your site, how they will actually think and perceive the product that you have, and then how they go through uh, the first couple of steps in that funnel is just as important. And I think when people think about like, growth is not important because uh, I'm just building for our users, well, most of your users actually aren't users yet, but they will be. So that, that's like broadening the, the idea of what a user is. Just because you click sign up doesn't necessarily mean that that's the first part of that funnel. Um, we have a philosophy uh, in, the, in, the, in the growth team. I think most people that end up working on growth, uh, at some point in, in their career or in, in, in the products they work on, they end up in, in a spot where they have to make a critical decision. Should I focus on just driving this number, or should I actually uh, like make, think about the user experience as, as the thing that comes first? So um, in advance of these things at Airbnb, we actually took a stand here. So we said, if we come to a point where, where our options is to solely focus on driving numbers versus and then uh, not delivering the best possible user experience, we always opt for the best, better user experience. I am fully convinced that you can always build a great user experience and have growth go hand in hand with that. Um, one way I think about kind of user growth through social or user growth through the, the um, um, through the stories that our users tell versus focusing on marketing. It's just like a simple fact of what's the, the, the strategy that will scale once you get to 50 or 100 or, or 200 million users. Well, this, we think that this, the strategy that scales the best is where you can democratize the means that people are discovering and, and hearing about your, uh, your service and get in, that into the users. So it's more important for us to build great tools to have our users tell the story than to have our, ourselves tell the story. It's more important for driving the compounding growth and exponential growth to have the users be really good at that because that's something that's gonna keep growing as we get more and more users. So Airbnb growth story is a, is a good one. 
uh, we've had a great growth rate and um, seen uh, exp almost an exponential uh, increase in the nights booked and, and the usage of our service. We're still not like this massive, massive company. Like in terms of the number of people that actually travel on Airbnb, is, it's not massive. A lot of people in the world have heard of Airbnb. It's not massive either. So the opportunity is still, we're in the very beginning of this. And the goal of the growth team is like, if we can sustain the growth rate to be at a really high level, then this graph will probably continue in a couple more years. And that's kind of the challenge. And that's what we measure ourselves towards. Um, when you're deciding to build a growth team in your, in your company, uh, Airbnb was a product that we already had something people wanted, wanted to use. It was a great product experience. And in the very beginning, it was a lot of friction of using the product and still there, still there is. But because the, 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 the product value people got out of, of booking and staying in Airbnb was so strong, then the user would push through that. And as we were lowering the friction and making the site and, and the app easier to use, <clears throat> uh, those things have gotten better. But when you think about how to actually start build, working on growth inside the product team, uh, one way to think about it is that of all the things that I'm building, most of, the thing, most of those things actually don't drive top of the funnel growth. Most of the things that you're working on can be put in the context of a funnel, and, and very few things of the products that you have actually touch non users. So this is just a sample of some of the, uh, some of the features that we have on Airbnb, and most of those features actually don't touch uh, non users. They're inside the flow. They are after you've, you've um, uh, contacted a host or there after you became a user, and most of those cases actually don't touch people that are not already on the site. Um, give an example of things that do touch non-users, and many of these things actually have surprisingly high impact. So referrals is one of them where you, as a user, are able to invite your friends and tell them about their service. Wishlist is another one of them, and sharing is another one of them. Uh, are users telling great stories about our product uh, on, on sites like Facebook and other applications? Um, the listing page. So a listing page is where uh, many, many of our search queries land on. So if I search on um, something, a listing in Bolina Speech, in Bolina Speech, then I'll land on a listing page. So optimizing uh, some of these pages for external uh, traffic sources is really important. But the main takeaway here is most of, most of the things that you work on as a product team don't actually touch the, the, the people that are not yet your users. Um, so now I'm going to walk you through one of the products I worked on uh, this year, or I started last year, actually, which is our referrals product. So Airbnb, uh, back in 2011, launched the first version of our referrals product. Um, at the time, uh, I think it was constructed in a, in a great way, but uh, at the time, mobile wasn't as big as it is today. So this is a purely web product. And when we approached referrals, we were like, we want to pick up a big product that is driving top of the funnel growth, driving high quality top of the funnel growth, um, and we want to build something that we're really proud of. And we also want to bring it to mobile. So when I looked on that referral product that was um, live in, in, in 2011, it wasn't really something we were proud of. It wasn't really representing the, 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 the kind of product experience and the, and the brand experience of what Airbnb was. So this is the, the Invite Your Friends page. Um, if I invite a friend to Airbnb, that person will get uh, $25 off their first trip. When that trip is happening, I get $25 off my next trip. When that person you invited to become a host, I also get $75 off my next trip. So uh, there is a, this kind of reward that come back from inviting friends and telling friends about the service. This is the landing page that you arrived on uh, on that first referrals product. So you, you see an email, you click on that email, and you says, take a trip, here are some balloons, and sign up. So it's not really the, that kind of product you wanted, wanted to, to, uh, to build upon. So the first thing we did is we looked at all the data that we have for that referrals product. Luckily, most of the data was very, very well stored. So we can understand uh, pretty well how the product was doing, what channels were working, and, and none of these data is actually real, but it, it's exactly the forecast we built when we started this product. So we said, if we're going to make a better version of referrals, we're going to make some assumptions of how does the referrals funnel look like. So some example here is there are, the first step of the funnel is how many monthly active users do we have, and does that relate to sending invites? And how many people can we actually get to send invites? And then how many invitees can each, each person send? And then there's some conversion rate to get those people to become users, to become guests, and to become hosts. And if you compound all these things and, and, and count it up, you have some direct revenue potential. Uh, we made a good case, which is basically the case of, OK, if we just make this tiny, slightly better, like expected, then what we get to, and a better in the best case. And then we're like, every single week, we're tracking this on like the current case. So where are we on all these levers? This is how we started off. And we said, let's just, we don't really know yet which one of these that we should 
be focusing on, so let's do, redo everything. We also went out and talked to other companies uh, and see what they were doing, and uh, all the three, the four ones on the right here, are, on the left, are companies that you've heard of. So these are companies that you have heard of that we went out talking to and listened to them and heard about their referral program and, and how, how big an impact that had for their growth. And then Airbnb was um, not as big, but uh, it was inspirational to meet the other companies and learn from them. Um, so then we are on shipping. And as a, as a company, um, as, a, as a growth team, like, it's sometimes good to get away from the office and sometimes good to really get the focus and try to build and, and ship this product that we're doing. So the one thing, uh, uh, the way we do these things are, are we have a small team. We actually started with, with two engineers, one person who's an UN designer and myself. And we started walking through the different platforms. And at the time, we decided to build for iOS, Android, and web at the same time. This was in one way risky, but at the same time, we, we didn't want to just do redo web. We actually wanted to attack those two platforms that mattered the, uh, the most. And there was actually on, uh, the, we didn't care, for, care about before. So, um, the reason that mobile matters so much is half of all the emails that, are, that we send out are actually being consumed and read on mobile. And to not have any kind of attribution or redemption flow on mobile would probably be a mistake. So that's how we ended up uh, uh, focusing on mobile. Um, so we started off with just sketching out how the flow would look like. We went on to design, and we designed for all the three platforms. Um, and as a company, we do run out of apartments, so we ended up running, running an apartment on Airbnb to go away and have an offsite. So this is in November, December of last year, and we started shipping the product. So there was five of us on the offsite, uh, and we were actually building for all the, th the three platforms at the same time, plus the back end. And the work that was involved was roughly five people, and uh, we spent about three months from the beginning until the end, and we wrote about 30,000 lines of code. Um, at the time, there was a small mobile team at Airbnb, and because we wanted to ship our own mobile product as a growth team, we actually became the, became the first team to us, um, the, the largest team uh, in, uh, contributing to our mobile product as of the, the mobile team. Um, so how did it go? We launched in end of January, um, and we were immediately looking at kind of um, the result that we're seeing. We launched on web, iOS, and Android at the same time. Um, this is how the web product looked like. So you would go to Airbnb slash invite. Um, you can find this uh, through our site through many different entry points, and I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, when you land on the site, there's a number of different ways that you can invite your friends uh, through uh, Gmail, um, through Facebook, Twitter, direct code, or sending a direct invite. Um, and we were measuring each single one of these steps independently, so we know once an invite being sent, like which of these channels are actually converting the best. Um, the emails that were sent out, we immediately started A-B testing. So these were the emails, and the goal of the emails that we're sending out in terms of the invites were to make sure that they appear as gifts and not as promotion. So we included a photo of the sender uh, in that email. We were A-B testing with the, with the communication so that it would have the, the feel of, of, of a gift for the receiver. And then we would monitor the responses we were getting, because obviously the emails were not being sent from the end users, but from us. And we will see what people actually were saying back to us about these emails, and we got the perception that these people are really treating this as a gift, which is exactly the way we wanted. Um, we experiment with something called recommended contacts. From the Gmail API and from the uh, Android API, there's a way that you can pull out contact information and figure out which contacts that are close to you or contacts that you fre frequently talk, talk to. Uh, this is an experiment that's still kind of running, and we're evaluating the, the results of this, but it's been live on Gmail and on Android. And the goal here is basically we are pulling information from Gmail and from Android to figure out who are the people you talk to the most uh, in order to get a higher uh, conversion rate on the send. So you're more likely to send to these people and then a higher conversion rate on the receiver. So these people are more likely to actually sign up. Um, we opted to not go for the other end of that spectrum, which is you just try to optimize for as many invites as possible. We don't want to... Uh, that's kind of another one of those kind of use experience versus growth issues that you take, and we ended up going for the use experience one here. I still have a question. Did you play with the size of picture in that flow? Uh, we haven't played with the size of pictures. Uh, we do track if we don't load up a photo. If we don't load up just the... Um, um, the question was if you play with, it, with, with the size of pictures. We don't do that. We do track if there are pictures and if they're not pictures and see how pictures perform better, and they end up doing perform better. Um, so mobile, uh, we launched for iOS and Android at the same time. Uh, on mobile in the United States, we don't uh, send SMSs. Uh, anyone who's doing that, I will like 
make sure you really know the legal situation first, and it's, it can be a risk that you might not want to take. So we opted out, <clears throat> depending on what countries that we launched in this is, we were not doing SMS, in the US we're doing it through email. Um, and then as a user, we're loading up your, your, your address book, and we saw much higher conversion on actually loading in the address book on mobile than we saw on the web, obviously. Um, and then we're tracking the refers to being sent and giving users feedback as people are signing up from the email that they're sending. And this is the Android version of the, appli of the application. So um, one thing that the growth team has always been pretty good at is we're good at tracking and instrumenting things. And the way we did tracking for this specific product is that we, we built a taxonomy of all the events they want to track ahead of time, and we instrumented every single one of these events right on the day we launched, so like we, before the day we launched. So on the moment that we launched, we were actually live with our dashboards like on that day. And that made it really easy for us to figure out where should we go and iterate on this product and where should we go next. So once we were live, um, um, the first thing we did was obviously looking at the impact, but also looking at the, at the forecast. So the impact of the referrals program since we launched at the end of January has been uh, hundreds of thousands of additional nights um, that are booked by referred users just in 2014 so far. Um, so it's been a, a huge success. In some countries, we've seen uh, a much higher success than others. So the more mature a market, the less of an impact, and the less mature of a market is the more of an impact from the referral program. Um, one question you might have from, from launching a referral program is that, is this just kind of like some kind of schema that users take advantage of? They'll get a free night, and then they end up not becoming good users. So obviously, we're tracking the quality metrics of, of the performance of these users. And how do they perform? Well, they perform better than the, the, the average user. So looking on guest bookings, looking on hostings, these users were generally better than the average users. If you look on uh, referred users sending more invites, they're actually way better than the average users. So referred users sending more invites um, is a really, really strong point. Um, so once we looked at that, we went back to our forecast. We checked in each one of these, um, these steps, and we said, um, how many monthly active users are we sending? And try to evaluate where is the opportunity going next. And this is kind of where we are right now. So we look into some of, these, uh, some of the uh, conversion points in the funnel, and some are doing way better than others. So from, from the forecast, we can determine what is the next big opportunity for this product. But it's already had a massive impact. So it, it's, we're at the scale right now where every single one of these um, optimizations has, has a material impact. And that was, that was it. Um, <laughs> any questions? We have time for some questions. Yes? So the question was, have you analyzed the impact of sending an email from your own email account from, versus sending an email from the server? Uh, we haven't tested that. We um, did face that question. We came to SMS, though. So in SMS, we actually send the SMSs from our own client. Um, we do test a lot with the subject line. Um, we test a bunch of different things in the email to see how that performs, but we haven't tested that thing. Uh, I think we think that tracking is easier if you have full control of the whole funnel, so that would be a reason that we would want to send the emails ourselves. Um, we do monitor things like um, uh, spam count and conversion rate, and all the different things that can affect the emails, like on, on a, almost on a daily, daily basis to make sure that we're not doing anything wrong. And in general, like, I think that the, the performance is really good. Uh, right here. So the question was, how do we uh, choose what to work on next in terms of the different growth uh, opportunities that we have? Um, so the referral growth funnel, the, the growth funnel in general for Airbnb is that the number of different sources to drive growth. And some of them are bigger than others. Uh, one of the biggest ones is just word of mouth growth. And that's, that's harder to, hard to work on because you understand it less. Um, some of the, the obvious ones are paid growth and SEO and, and referrals and, and things like that. Um, I think what we try to do before we start a new product is try to forecast that product. So we say, if we would lift the pay traffic by, uh, the conversion rate for pay traffic by 25%, what kind of impact would that have compared to any other sources? So we try to forecast the different sources of traffic we have and work on that. And then there's some of the products that are more generalized that would be, uh, how can we lift all of Airbnb's growth globally? 
versus how can we lift certain enemy growth in certain countries or in certain platforms. So like there would be some more strategic growth versus some more generalized growth. So that's kind of the, the, the things we think about. Yes, back there. Uh, it's a great question. The question is like uh, growth teams or product teams have some mindset of, of being driven by data versus being driven by product and how do you uh, make sure that, that you can get the whole team to be kind of driven by both and that I think about both. Um, so at Airbnb as an engineer or product manager, you're, you're kind of expected to know how to find your own data. So we have SQL classes, we have accessibility to all the data for all users. I mean trying to educate users to get better and better at making those decisions. I would say it's in the growth team, we're helping out with educating other teams and actually uh, making these, these bets more, uh, more data-driven. At the same time, um, there's a, like, if you're only data-driven, there's a risk you end up in this uh, plateau of not being able to make big leaps. So we look at other, company, other parts of the teams and say, you guys are really good at making big leaps, like we can learn from you. So I think there's, there's a little bit of both. Thank you so much.